In this PRAC activity, you'll have a look at total internal reflection and measure what we call the critical angle. And you will use the critical angle to calculate the refractive index and compare that to the other values that you got from your early experiment. Now, if you are careful, it's possible to use this experiment to calculate the different refractive indices for different colours of perspex. But let's see how we do that. So here we have a protractor, paper protractor, and here is our um, semicircular prism of made of perspex. And here, of course, we have our ray box or light box. What I'm going to do is position <coughs> this um, semicircular prism so that it's right in the centre so it's sitting right on that line there and in the centre and I'm going to aim the beam of light or the ray of light right at the centre there and <clears throat> here it'll become along the radius the radius of the semicircular prism. So this angle here, the angle that the ray makes with the uh, with the surface of the prism is at 90 degrees and therefore goes to the centre. And what I want to look at is what happens to the angle of refraction as I increase the angle of incidence. And as you can see as I move this around, still aiming to head that ray uh, towards the right at the centre. The angle of refraction is getting larger as this gets larger but you will notice that in this case the angle here is or the, the ray is refracted away from the normal. So going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium the ray is refracted away from the normal. Now as I increase this you notice two things eventually. One is that the amount of light that is reflected back into the prism increases. You may be able to make out this ray of light just coming out here, but you will see that increase. So the amount of reflected light increases more clearly visible now and this is getting closer and closer to 90 degrees and as I move it still further I'm just trying to make that 90 degrees I think that is about as close as I can get to making that 90 degrees now that is what we call the critical angle and what it's doing is producing total internal reflection. In other words, all of the light, you can just see a little bit there coming out still, all of the light is refracted inside. So, And this is our critical angle. So the critical angle is the angle of incidence that will produce the small... Sorry, it is... So the critical angle is the angle of incidence in the more dense medium that will produce total internal reflection. It is the smallest angle of incidence that will produce total internal reflection. And you will notice that if I make the angle of incidence larger than 90 degrees, we still, of course, get total internal reflection. I can make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Always we're going to get total internal reflection once the angle of incidence here is greater than the critical angle. Critical angle, of course, is the angle between the normal and the uh, incident ray. So, uh, going back now to the critical angle, I'll see if I can move that back to get exactly that angle where we get the first angle at which we get total internal reflection. So there I've still got some light emerging so I'll move it back and that looks to be about it. So I'll mark that, take this away, measure this and it looks like 
42 degrees. That is the critical angle, 42 degrees. Now that critical angle can be used to find the refractive index of our perspex. The sine of the critical angle is 1 over the refractive index. So sine C, the critical angle, is equal to 1 over the refractive index. So here we've got 42, so sine 42 degrees is equal to 1 over the refractive index. So the refractive index is equal to 1 over sine 42. I can put that into the calculator and get the value for the refractive index. I can compare that value now with the value for the refractive index that I got in the previous exercise. See how you go with that.